All right, guys. So Saturday of week one of the college football season is winding down to a close. So let's go ahead and take a look, break down, recap, and discuss some of the highlights of the day, some of the games that kind of stand out to me that are going to have an impact on the top 25 and potentially a college football playoff going forward. All right, so first off here, we'll start with Clemson and Georgia. That's probably the big one to jump out. Georgia gets the win there, 34-3 to over Clemson, as you can see here. Now, I think this kind of shows, number one, that Georgia is definitely the number one team in the country right now, uh, and there's not really much competition up there. I think they, as of right now, at this moment, I would say are head and shoulders above everybody else. Uh, while other teams had impressive wins, they weren't over teams of Clemson's caliber. Uh, and then as for Clemson, you know, you're obviously not on Georgia's level right now, but you do have a chance to win the ACC. You were still in that running. And the good news is with playoff expansion, even with this loss, they could still make the playoff no, no matter what. Uh, but in the ACC, it's going to be tough. They're going to have to play a little better than this. So I don't want to take too much away from this game. Obviously, it is week one, but my main two takeaways here, number one, Georgia is the number one team in the country. Number two, Clemson's got some work to do if they want to win the ACC. While nobody's going to be Georgia's caliber, it's not going to be easy. They're going to have some stiff competition in there, which we'll talk about here in a second. All right, so moving on to the next game I want to discuss, and that's going to be Penn State and West Virginia. That was that next game and kind of the noon slot that kind of stood out. Penn State gets a win here, 34-12. Now, this did have a little weather delay for a little bit, but Penn State looks the part. All right, so they go to Morgantown, go to West Virginia, still get the win here by a pretty handle margin, 22. I think they were favored by about 10, talking about Penn State. Uh, but Drew Aller looked pretty good here, three touchdowns, over 200 yards passing. Their defense looked good, as to be expected. They are clearly a top-five defense in the country, if not more than that. Uh, and I think – Honestly, number eight might be a little low for Penn State because I think West Virginia is a contender in the Big 12. I really like this one for Penn State going forward and with the way Oregon struggled today. I think Penn State might be the second best team in the Big 10, but I want to overreact just yet. All right, so moving on to the next one we're going to discuss here. If I can get back down to it. All right, so that's going to be Miami and Florida. So Miami, to be honest with you, I thought Florida might win this game. Being in the swamp, uh, it's never easy to play even with a team that's kind of down. So my main two takeaways here for this one, number one, Miami, as of right now, I think is the team to beat in the ACC. They are so talented. Cam Ward looks legit. They've got Damian Martinez in that backfield. Really good duo there. They're talented. Their defense is good. Their offense is good. They're going to be a threat in the ACC, and I think they can play with almost anybody. As for Florida, Billy Napier is on borrowed time. I don't know – when he's necessarily going to get fired, probably, but I think it's coming up because this this was a beat down here, forty-one to seventeen. I mean, that's just a beat down. Seventeen seven in the second quarter, fourteen nothing in the third quarter. It might be time for a change for Florida. I mean, you got rid of the, uh, Dan Mullen, and he had three winning seasons in a row, and then you fire him after that fourth one. Uh, you made a mistake. It's time to own up to it. I thought Billy Napier would be a success at Florida. Obviously, that has not happened though. All right, let's move on to the next one I want to discuss here, Virginia Tech and Vanderbilt. All right, so this one kind of shocked me. Virginia Tech's kind of been a sleeper pick, not mine personally, but a lot of people's, uh, in the ACC. Now, they still could win the ACC, but starting off your season with a seven-point loss to Vanderbilt is not quite the start you want to get. Virginia Tech returns a lot from last year. Vanderbilt is the bottom dweller of the SEC for a reason. And despite it being an SEC team, when you play that bottom dweller of the SEC, you want to be able to beat them. So Virginia Tech here is a loser for me. And they do have a shot still to make the ACC championship. I mean, obviously, you can run the table, but terrible start to the season there. But hats off to Vanderbilt. All right, next one, Texas A&M, Notre Dame. All right, so this one actually kind of came down to the wire. Notre Dame pulled away late. But main thing from this, Raleigh Leonard, I think Notre Dame can make the playoff and probably should make the playoff. Looking at the rest of their schedule, I mean, they've got Louisville, Florida State, USC. Those are probably the only three – realistically losable games on the schedule. Uh, so as long as Riley Leonard can stay healthy, that defense is good enough to carry him. And I think Riley Leonard and these receivers are only going to get more comfortable. That O-line is going to get better as the season progresses. So I think Notre Dame is going to be a playoff team. As for AM, Notre Dame is a tough defense, but Connor Wyman didn't quite look the part for me. As you can see here, 100 yards, two interceptions, and they were at home, so it was in their environment. But I know he's been getting a lot of first-round NFL draft buzz. I don't see it. Uh, despite Notre Dame being such a good defense, I just I'm not believing the hype there. 
Uh, Mike Elko, I think, given time, will be fine at Texas A&M. And this isn't a bad loss. Obviously, it was a top-10 team. But Connor Wyman didn't look very good to me. But Notre Dame, I think they'll make the playoff. They've got just such an easy schedule. All right, there was a couple of other games I wanted to discuss, if I can find it on here. Mainly is Oregon. I can't find it on here, but it's on here somewhere. There it is. Oregon, Idaho. All right, Oregon beats Idaho 24-14. to 14. So Oregon struggled here mightily. Despite Dylan Gabriel putting up some superhero numbers, I don't know how with these offensive stats they only scored 24 points. But Dylan Gabriel, 41 for 49, 380 yards and, only, and two touchdowns. But they only scored 24 points, and they only had – what, 14 going into the fourth? A uh, little surprising here. Now, I'm not the highest on Oregon. All right, admittedly, they're towards the bottom of my top 10. But really bad start here. Kind of a strange. Like I said, they put up really good numbers. Uh, I didn't really watch much of this one because I was watching the AM Notre Dame game. But I flipped over to it back and forth a couple times. But Oregon struggles here out of the gate. Now, they do have a lot of new players coming to this roster from everything they lost. Uh Dylan Gabriel in particular, as well as a bunch of transfers on defense. But I think they'll be fine in the long run, but not a good start here. I would put Penn State above them probably uh, power ranking-wise. All right, then another team in the Big Ten I want to talk about, and that's Michigan, if I can find this game on here. Probably not going to be able to. They got this so jacked up. But anyways, Michigan. All right, they struggled for a little bit with Fresno State. There it is. But they get the win 30-10 to 10 at the end with the, their defense kind of stepping up. But Michigan struggled a little bit here. We'll see what they're really made of next week when they get Texas. They do host Texas next week, so that's one to look out for. Uh, but they're going to need to get some help. All right, Donovan Edwards obviously didn't quite get it going for Michigan. As you can see, Mullings led them in rushing. Uh, but Fresno State's not any slouch for a G5. They are probably a top-10 G5 school, but still Michigan should be able to handle them. Uh, but we'll find out what really they're made of against Texas next week. Speaking of Texas, I thought they looked pretty good. Uh, got a win over Colorado State. Well, it's not much. Colorado State probably is better than Akron, Western Kentucky, Furman, you know, who all these other teams are playing. Uh, so I thought that was a good one for Texas, 52 nothing over Colorado State. That's a solid start. If you think you are a college football playoff team, that's definitely a kind of a team you should beat like that, in my opinion. Uh, and then another one to talk about here is Tennessee. I thought they looked pretty good. Now, it's hard to tell with some of these teams because they're not really playing anybody, but Tennessee – 69-3 over Chattanooga, Chattanooga. That's a good win. Uh, Iowa State struggled a little bit. I've been high on Iowa State. I thought they were kind of a top 25 team, but struggled with North Dakota. Now, North Dakota is a good FCS school, but still struggled just a little bit there. Boise State, Ashton GT put up some good stats, but Boise State's defense is questionable, winning 56-45. to I don't know about it. All right, then there are still a couple going on right now as we speak. All right, so pretty much all these right here. New Mexico, Arizona, that's one kind of to watch out for that was close when I came on and started recording this. So Arizona is talented. They are a top 25 team here. I think they have the talent to win the Big 12, but with the coaching changes, I don't know how they're going to look. We'll see. But that's kind of my quick recap of the Saturday night slate of week one. Be on the lookout either tomorrow night or Monday night after these games are done because I know week one is kind of a – iffy on when it ends you know i mean you've got the sunday night game you've got the monday night game so i'll put out my college football playoff or not college football playoff college football top 25 four week two after those games are done uh, i'll probably put up my g5 top two five later tonight so be on the lookout for that but what did you think of this saturday of week one who were the standouts to you who were your winners who were your losers let me know comment down below make sure to like this video and subscribe